I would say myself, if uh, Martin Luther King was the equivalent of George Washington, then uh, Dr. Walker was the equivalent of Alexander Hamilton, and it was a, a key player at each uh, step of the, of the way. Dr. Wyatt T. Walker has been a hero of both the civil rights movement and of education reform. As the first executive director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and as Martin Luther King's closest aide and chief of staff, Dr. Walker was at the center of the fight for racial equality. He has been called King's field general for the Birmingham Civil Rights March, facing down Sheriff Bull Connor to end segregation in the toughest city in the South. He composed King's smuggled writings into the famous letter from a Birmingham jail. His wife and children were in the Gaston Motel the night it was bombed. He was with King for his I Have a Dream speech and the March on Washington. He was with King to collect the Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo. In the 1960s, Dr. Walker moved north to become the senior minister of the Canaan Baptist Church of Christ in Harlem. He fought drug dealers and built housing and fought for better public schools. He was an early proponent for charter reform along with other inner city ministers. In 1999, he teamed up with me and Victory Schools to found the first ever charter school in New York State, now named the Suzulu Walker Charter School of Harlem in his honor. It was described in this book, A Light Shines in Harlem, uh, by Mary Bounds. Although weakened by a stroke, Dr. Walker continues to live in Virginia and remains a strong supporter for charter reform. He is the living symbol of the link between charter schools and the work of Dr. King. Dr. Walker stands for the ongoing battle for civil rights. I learned very quickly that public education was in chaos, so to speak, and it got worse. It didn't get better. They talked about reform and and, and changing and improving, but it didn't happen. And of course, as Jesse Jackson says, when America gets a cold, African Americans get pneumonia. Our schools were so bad. Well, I got with uh, my colleagues, the ministers, and we lobbied to have a, a charter school law passed in New York, and we were successful. We went to work on, on trying to get the legislation passed, which didn't have much of a chance before we began. But the, the politicians recognized that in the African-American community, if you have the church leaders, you, you have good support, and, and we use that to our advantage. In a sense, it was the next battlefield that we had not recognized, but the generations before we came to the civil rights uh, laws, the schools were so bad that most of the Young people were crippled educationally. That's how I got my attention to turn to charter schools, and fortunately I met you, and uh, you paved the way for me. Well, thank you, thank you. Oh yes, without a doubt, because you knew how important a good education was. All the people who he, he surrounded himself with were, were very well educated and had good education and saw the big picture. And Dr. King uh, saw very instantly and clearly that education was a prime prerequisite for what we were doing and a complement to the civil rights movement. Even though I've been wheelchair bound, I've been trying to talk to the mayor of Richmond about the charter schools here because 
the schools are in chaos here in Richmond, not doing well as they were in New York when I first came. After a lifetime of fighting for civil rights and better schools, Dr. Wyatt T. Walker, a living symbol of faith, justice, ethics, and honor, deserves the Lifetime Achievement Award for education reform.